Hello and welcome to this video segment on an SHP Precise Laser System. In this video we're going to show the basic use of the laser. We'll go over settings and features of the laser and we'll show you how to do a little cutting. There is a little technique involved in learning how to cut with it, but it's not difficult. Just remember this is different. It's not a scalpel, it's not an electrosurge, and you have to practice a little bit before you get proficient at using it. So we'll demonstrate using the laser on a pig mandible. If you don't have a pig mandible available, you can cut on a tomato, an orange, a hot dog, or a piece of meat as a pork chop. Anything that'll help demonstrate to you how to get the correct cutting technique. So at this time, I'd like you to get out your laser and set it up so we can go along and do it together. So let's go to the laser. Make sure that the handpiece is fully assembled with the handpiece sleeve and a disposable tip. It doesn't matter which tip you put on now. Turn on the display and base modules, navigate to the precise SHP app, and start it. Enter your passcode, and then select the operate screen. The precise SHP emits laser energy at a wavelength of 810 nanometers. The intensity of the energy can be selected between 0.5 and 3 watts in 0.1 watt increments, simply pressing the down arrow or up arrow buttons to select the laser intensity. Select the laser mode here. In continuous wave mode, the laser is always on when the foot pedal is pressed. Pressing the pulse mode button cycles through three available pulse durations, labeled at 30, 50, and 75. The numbers represent the milliseconds that each pulse lasts in a 100 millisecond cycle. A simple rule of thumb is that when in pulse mode, the number selective effectively reduces the laser energy to that percentage of a full power beam. The aiming beam is a visible red laser light that is much lower in intensity than the 810 nanometer main beam. The aiming beam has the same intensity as a laser pointer, and that's basically what its job is, to help you see what tissue you're about to treat. Adjust the intensity of the aiming beam as needed, or reducing it to its lowest level setting actually shuts it off. You can indicate which disposable tip is attached to the handpiece. The SHP makes slight operational adjustments to the laser emission depending on which tip is used, to make sure the performance is consistent. If you haven't done so, please put on the protective glasses. Press the ready button. The settings are locked in and the laser is ready to fire. You'll notice that the yellow ready light is turned on on the front of the base module. Unless you turned it off, the aiming beam will now be visible. Don't worry, the main beam doesn't activate until you step on the foot switch. Position the tip over the treatment site then step on the foot pedal to activate the main beam. You will notice a large red button will appear on the display. This is the laser stop button, redundant to the button on the base module. Pressing it will turn off the laser beam and show a laser stop warning screen. If this happens, you will need to press the laser stop on the base, then clear the warning message on the display. There are other ways to stop the laser quickly. Release the foot pedal, press the home button on the iPod, pressing the power button on the base, or removing the power cord from the back of the base. If your laser is still firing, remove your foot from the pedal. The SHP allows you to adjust the volume of the beeps and tones that the laser makes. So you can hear these signals without it being overly intrusive or distracting to the patient. If you haven't already done so, please change the passcode from the factory setting to a passcode of your choosing. The passcode serves as a lockout key to prevent unauthorized people from gaining access to the laser controls and firing the laser. You also have the option of changing the language of the SHP to one that's more comfortable with you. Simply select the language from the list shown. The app will return the start to the start screen in the language you have just selected. Please note that changing the language affects only the precise SHP app and not the rest of the programs on the iPod. Likewise, changing the language on the iPod does not affect the language setting on the SHP. This iPod has all the functionality and capability of any ordinary iPod that you may buy from an electronics retailer. 
CAO Group provides the iPod with the SHP kit so you can be assured the, the system will work safely and correctly. CAO Group cannot possibly test for or anticipate every program, app, or download that exists now or may be developed in the future. Thus, there is uncertainty about how other programs or files could affect the performance of the SHP system. CEO Group encourages you to refrain from loading other content on the iPod. Always test fire the laser before using it on a patient to ensure the system is working correctly. Please use your professional judgment with regards to the iPod. There are two basic techniques to using the laser, non-contact and contact. For non-contact, -con as the name implies, you do not allow the fiber at the end of the tip to touch the tissue being treated. Once the fiber is laser is firing, hold the handpiece so the fiber is about 2 to 3 millimeters above the tissue. Slowly move the tip from side to side in an even motion to expose the tissue to laser energy. After a few seconds, stop and examine your work. The operator's manual contains a table of settings for numerous procedures and indicates whether a contact or non-contact technique should be used. An example of a non-contact technique would be treating an aphthous ulcer. For the contact mode, you will be touching the tissue with the fiber. It's usually helpful to initiate the fiber prior to using the contact technique. Initiating a fiber creates some intentional buildup on the fiber end. This buildup converts the laser energy to heat. Thus, when an initiated fiber contacts the tissue, it has the effect of a very hot, precise knife. Initiate a fiber by touching the fiber on some articulating paper or putting it into a cork and briefly pressing the foot pedal. You may notice an intense white flash or hear some popping noise. This is normal. The dyes in the articulating paper are absorbing the laser energy and very quickly reaching several hundred degrees. This carbonized material is now adhered to the end of the fiber and will continue to absorb laser energy and convert it to heat. With the laser active, contact the tissue and sweep along the tissue with brief paint brush type strokes. Remember that you're not trying to cut the tissue with the fiber as you would with a scalpel. Let the fiber rest on the tissue and let the heat of the fiber cut or ablate the tissue. Again, stop and inspect your work frequently to make sure you aren't cutting too deeply or charring adjacent tissue. You may need to frequently wipe the fiber with gauze moistened with water to remove tissue that may stick to the fiber. If you notice the laser not cutting as effectively as at the start, it may be that the fibers become too clogged up with carbonized material. You may need to clean the fiber, or you may need to stop and replace the tip with a fresh tip and initiate the new tip before continuing. Well, I hope this video portion has been helpful in showing you how the laser cuts. Now, if you've never used a laser before and it seems to be cutting a little slow, you will have to work on your technique a little bit. Remember, it's all about how the laser interacts with the tissue, and every tissue type is a little different. There will be more videos available throughout the course and also with the online course that comes with the purchase of your SHP Precise Laser System.